Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and thanks for joining us for this wonderful classic television episode of the Western TV show, Tate, starring David McLean. This episode of Tate has a very early appearance by Robert Redford. Robert Redford started in television in 1960, and he was in a few Westerns that year, the first being Maverick, and also an episode of The Deputy, and he was in two episodes of Tate. Now the late 50s Western TV shows had action, but they also concentrated a lot on the drama that was going on. And Tate isn't any different. It's a classic TV Western. And the special guest star in this episode is Robert Culp. Robert Culp had been in a lot of TV Westerns up to this point. In fact, he had had his own series, Trackdown, starring as Texas Ranger Hobie Gilman from 1957 to 1959. In this episode, he plays an unscrupulous bounty hunter. And it's brought to you here free on the internet by Westerns on the Web. Get ready because here it comes. Does it belong to? I said, who owns that sorrel? That's my horse, boy. That's my gun. You filth! You dirty filth! What's your name, boy? What's your name? Torset. I don't place you. Who was it? Your father? Your brother? I like an answer, boy. My father, gunfighter! Is that good enough? My sister's dying from the same shotgun blast. Jeremy, Texas. Is that good enough? You know who I am now? Son, I was in Jeremy about two months ago. I saw a homestead burning and I went to take a look. There was nobody around, so I didn't put my nose into it. It was a dirty thing. I had nothing to do with it. I found your hoof prints. Your gun shells. I said it was there. And my gun used a common kind of shell. I'm gonna kill you. And if I don't, I hired a bounty hunter that will. $250, mister. That's exactly what your life is worth. How much did you get paid to do it? I suppose I ought to see this through. But I'm on my way north to the railhead. And your town's a thousand miles away. Now you go back home and speak to a man named Kincaid. The man who hired you to kill my father? He tried to. But I turned him down when I heard what he had in mind for me. Now you follow me, boy. I might have to kill you. And that's a thing I have no desire to do. Aren't you gonna wait for your haircut? Mm -hmm.
saw how it happened, tell it that way. If his bounty hunter friend comes, tell him he'll have to earn that $250. Keep rooms. No, sir. There's a little village 12 miles to the north. There's a hotel. I've come a long way over those mountains. But I spend a night in the smithy shop. Sure, you're welcome to that. And would you sell me some feed for the horse? He looks hard traveled. McConnell's the name. Sean McConnell. McConnell? That's right. Tate. Irish? Scotch. Gee. Irish on my grandfather's side. I suppose you know it was the Irish who introduced the bagpipes into Scotland. <laughs> Their national instrument. Yes, sir. To our national disgrace. But I'll say this for the Scotch. They had a Scotch poet once, Robert Burns, whom I greatly admire. You know of him? Yes, sir. You know his rhyming? Yes, sir, some. And I've had occasion to read yours. The Nevada Sentinel in a barber shop. The dark hills lie green and small things unseen are close to God. Ach, man, don't recite. You've no ear for it. You like my rhyming? Very much. Good. Come in. I'll suffer with us. You're welcome. This is my wife, and this is my youngest daughter. Yeah. It's chicken and dumplings, Mr. Tate. Do you like them? Yes, sir. <laughs> God bless me, puny. They make him puny nowadays. Uh -huh. I'm prone to agree with you. How old you say you were? Sixty-two. Then what should I be doing? Practice, man. It's a knack, not strength. You could have fooled me. It pays for tobacco at that. <laughs> Would you like to hear me recite my poetry? Yes. Mr. Tate must be tired. It's time for bed. Bed. All right. Good night. Better take this ladder. Thank you. And I have a raincoat for you. The rain's let up for a little while. Now this land is so much like Sean. Gentle. Rough, unpredictable. My wife liked the rain. How old were you when you married him? Seventeen. I've loved him since I was a child. By the time I'm thirty, we will probably have eight children. When he's gone, I'll have them to remember him by.
later. Makes no difference at all to me, mister. Turn around. I won't say it again, I'll just kill you. I just work for the bounty, mister. Well, I got $400 in my pocket. Mm-hmm. I took it. That's a lovely thing. Oh, I do hate the rain. Purely hate rain. There'll be a lot of water in that river tonight. You ever get stuck in quicksand? No. I did. I'd rather wrestle a bear and cross that quicksand again, rope or no. It's a handsome woman. She married the old man? That's right. Let's get restless. The fog's the only crossing for a hundred miles. It's either that or go around. To Blackfoot country? That's right. Be worthwhile just to stay. Get out of here. I mean now. You got a bad bark on, man. You bite too? Oh. sometimes. The old man asks for it. But I believe in heaven and hell, Mr. Tate. Did you know that girl and Jeremy's still alive? The boy told me. Well, I get my bounty whether I bring you in pig or pork. Did you know that? I know it. I come a long way for two hundred and fifty dollars. You ever wonder why? It was a young girl dying, waiting for some dirty buckshot to work its way to her heart. I guess that's reason enough. Now, yeah. my wife died that way during a rebellion in Kansas. It was meant for me. I told you I didn't do it, mister. Not to your wife, not to the girl. 
We'll see. She'll say so. in high water. Ah, that's an ugly way to die, Sandy. But I tell you, if that girl back in Jeremy isn't alive when we get there, she say you wasn't the one that done it to her. You're dead. The only thing that's keeping you alive right now is that you stopped me back there. I'm doing evil. He says maybe you believe in heaven and hell, too. Maybe you didn't shoot the girl. So you want to lead off in a straight line where the rope was so that we can find out? Go on. Shoot your husband quick as I shoot a dog. Sandy, I don't know what drives you, fear of God or fear of the devil, but I swear by both. You hurt that old man, I'll kill you. Stage come by, why not? The river's holding up the northbound. And there's none due from Jesseville. I see. I can't help you now, Mr. Tate. You know that. Yes, ma'am. If I did give you a gun, could you kill that man first? No, ma'am, I don't think so. I have to feed the baby.
send a telegram? Uh-huh. Is the girl still alive? No. She died. Two days ago. The sheriff told me to turn you loose. Since she can't identify. I said I'd already killed you. Tell me to bring in your body and he'd give me the bounty. Now I have to know, Mr. Tate. Did you kill the girl? killed the men that murdered her. And then the men like the men that murdered her. Men like you. If you kill the girl in Jeremy and I turn you loose, I'm afraid I'm going to dream again. And they're bad dreams. I read a book one time about the Black Ages. and something they call a trial by ordeal. We'll let God decide whether or not you kill that girl. I'm going to give you your trial. The gun or the river. You got your choice. The quicksand don't get you. Or if I don't kill you, I guess that proves it. That, that you're innocent. But if you go down, either way, well, then I guess that proves that you done it to her. Now. You don't give me much choice, do you? Shot in the back, one in the front. Now.
Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Tate Western Television Show, starring David McLean. And remember, it's brought to you here free online by Westerns on the Web. We hope to see you again on down the trail. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day.